The mobile telecom revolution in India has reached over 700 million consumers but critical to the future success of new technology like 3G and 4G is the cost of telecom infrastructure. Today we will be discussing this important subject in the AGS Graham Bell Telecom Award Innovation Series. I am Pranjal Sharma. Joining me now are Mr. Vijay K. Agarwal, former CEO and Director of Reliance Infratel, Mr. B.S. Shantaraju, CEO Industars. Mr. Mahesh Chaudhary, CEO of Microcall Technology, and Mr. A. Sethuraman, Executive Director at Huawei. Thank you, gentlemen, for being with us uh, today. Uh, Vicky, if I could begin with you, what I would request all of you is to share your experience in the kind of innovation and the changes we're seeing in telecom infrastructure, your own company, your own experience, and where the industry is going. If I could ask you to begin with a, with a very short statement, sir. Yeah, I would like to really say as huge telecom infrastructure has been set up, especially in the private sector in the last 15-20 years. So what we have to see the innovation in respect of what is the existing infrastructure, how do we innovate it to become more productive, how do we do a replacement of some of this so that you know this gives the best value uh, to derive uh, cost and the fill factor uh, for this and how do we do the innovation in the new things which we put so that they are more uh, you know cost effective as well as, uh, you know, they can deliver more services. So all these three elements of uh, uh, the, the innovation, you know, is required. And uh, I would really say that in many of these, you know, power is one of the major issue which has been talked, uh, you know, over the years. I mean, we consume almost 8,000 crores of uh, diesel a year across the mobile towers. And there is a scope. Uh, if the businesses, uh, you know, the, the, the players come together, can be structured where almost 30% of the diesel can be saved because a solar power cannot replace 24 by 7, uh, uh, you know, the, the, it cannot deliver the 24 by 7 power because it will need, it will need huge uh, storage in that case. That's right. And if uh, this is addressed in 50,000 towers, almost 30% of this diesel can be saved. So, if we think big to go and address solar power in these 50,000 towers, and even if half of the diesel power is replaced, so we could easily talk 3,000 crores of diesel saved a year. That's, that's a clear area of innovation and change. Sure. Shanta, what's your view on this? I think uh, if you look at the telecom industry, the most important piece which has happened to this industry is it wanted to serve the most unserviced part of the economy, that is the bottom of the pyramid. And to make it to happen, it has done a very great business innovation, which I call it a strategic innovation. The fiercely competing forces, they put their infrastructure into the company, into one company, and they make it very independent. Not only they made it very independent, yeah, they did not say that that industry will share, that company will share the infrastructure only for these people who put the infrastructure. They allowed the platform to be shared by everybody. To give an example, the sheer magnitude of it, today in India we have roughly about 3,20,000 towers. By sharing, today we reached 1.89, 1.9 sharing. If we did not have a sharing of the infrastructure, you would have added another 2 lakh towers. The capex saved, the capital expenditure saved by this is roughly about 40,000 crores. But that is one part of it. Going forward, because the cost is shared, you have shared another saved, another 60,000 crores OPEX over the period of 15 years. So that is a major innovation, strategic innovation, it happened in this industry. But that, that's more business innovation. Business innovation. But going forward, right. this business innovation will transform itself in its various facets, be it active, be it backhaul, be it various other parts of these innovations will keep happening over a period of time. But to ensure that a bigger part of that 
will convert it into a real saving for a common man and through a tariff and through the <coughs> operators. I think we need to build an ecosystem, an ecosystem of the consumer, an ecosystem in which the operator will derive the benefit through the equipment providers, through the service provider, through the technology provider, through you know the solar initiative providers like that. I think the next stage of this strategic innovation is to create an ecosystem by which a bigger things will happen. Why only one lakh crore savings? <laughs> it will be a two lakh crore savings. It can happen. Vaish, how do you see? Uh, I completely agree, and I think uh, in terms of process innovation, we have to take a step forward and look at, learn from the Western world too, that today in the US there will be a pole act, that every standing pole should be shared. So it's not only a tower with three mobile operators or multiple operators, every single pole that is out there should be shared for alternate applications, and that is the innovation that we believe. Uh, would but be that would require step. technology innovation as well because you want you would want to have more productivity out of each pole, right? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So you know it has to be supported by the right amount of technology, and I, you know Huawei and all these companies are taking the right steps to not only have the large base stations with large power out, uh, you know, output, but the you know the smaller base stations. To me, that's a typical distributed antenna system, and I personally right. believe that is the future of telecom deployments. That would be the most efficient. And one is savings. You know, clearly, secondly, to me, it's a point where we start talking about quality. Today, the reach to the last home, and you know, where we are not right now talking about the burst of data. We are talking about Facebook. We are talking about movies. And to me, data is addictive, right? If you get few kbps, you want one mbps. You get one, you want ten. Uh, and that's the way an emerging country is, and we are at the thrust of that. So I strongly believe that uh, it's not only the uh, the innovation in deployment or the innovation in business. Right, that's a good point. I'll hold that. I'll come back to you sure. on on those kind of innovations. But Setu, clearly, better technology and more affordable technology is the key. Yeah, I think uh, the the actual point there is looking at both technology disruption and cost disruption. The reason is that the total cost of ownership for the operators are going up day by day. So what we need to do is to look at how can we optimize those costs, reduce the cost from the OPEX as well as the CAPEX. CAPEX is a smaller portion when you look at the overall total cost of ownership. And we talk about fuel consumption, which becomes a huge fuel bill for the operators. So when we talk about technology innovation happening, hmm. we consider what is the kind of power that is being consumed. How can we have multiple technologies from the same base station or from the same active infrastructure and look at space reduction and power consumption reduction as well as look at how it can be future proof, you know, so that they can start handling newer technologies that will come up uh, in the horizon. So as a technology player, we focus on looking at these challenges and coming up with a lot of innovation which will benefit the industry and one, reduce the costs as well as look at a green initiative, which is also very, very important. thing you ever saw a sunset a moonrise or simply a look was it something big or something small or maybe it's something you haven't seen yet introducing the second generation of intel core processors stunning visuals and smart performance mean computing as you've never seen it Get the best of the best from the best. Now read the finest selection of global business news from the Financial Times. Daily with the Financial Express. Read to me. Baat se baat ko jodna. Baat se baat ko jodna. Bund mein asma dekhna. Bund mein asma dekhna. ऊंची अपनी उड़ान है आंखों में ये जहान है ऊंची अपनी उड़ान है आंखों में ये जहान है पंखों में ऐसी जान है पंखों में ऐसी जान है आसमानी ये गूंज है आसमानी 
सीमेंट हो तो बिना नहीं बिना नहीं सीमेंट सदियों के लिए कैन अ बैंक रियली स्टैंड फॉर समथिंग कैन इट बैलेंस इट्स एम्बिशन विद इट्स कॉन्शियंस हैज नॉट एवरीथिंग इन लाइफ दैट काउंट्स कैन बी काउंटेड In the many places we call home, our purpose remains the same: to be here for people, here for progress, here for the long run, here for good. We bring today. Please, I love you. You know he's incomparable. There's no one like him. He's the Thomas Edison of our time. Computers, to me, is the most remarkable tool that we've ever come up with. What's the global icon who changed the game of technology and media? The Glenn Levin Books and Bloomberg UTV present Game Changers. Brought to you by the Glenn Levin Books, in association with Genius and Gorgeous, the stunning new Corolla Altis. question which i like to put to all of you is that as the penetration improves you would also need a far more denser population of of telecom infrastructure to to reach out not just in the urban clusters but also to go into areas which are underserved what are the kind of uh, changes and innovations that would be essential as the penetration grows how does the telecom infrastructure manage this busier environment without becoming without creating a more crowded atmosphere in the places that you are existing yeah i think you know the the important point as we go forward uh, we must uh, understand is a that we will penetrate into new areas to deliver inclusive growth and not only will penetrate into new areas all existing areas and new areas will have very high bandwidth applications in today's time we cannot Uh, segregate the business and technology as one like shanta said that you know the players came together and they reaped so much benefit for the industry because if the operator is able to reduce cost then only he is able to reduce the cost for the end customer so the whether it is a equipment supplier whether it is a service provider whether it is a application developer all the stakeholders and the government and regulator have to come together and rejig the business models constantly you know that's that's important because even as the cost per or the arpu or the average revenue per user is coming down the bandwidth and usage per user is expected to go up you have 3g it's it's picking up as it's going ahead so what are the innovations around the corner shanta see first thing is uh, is absolutely spot on the kind of bandwidth increase which will take place here the sheer usage is going to be many times multiple going forward we have to find out that how do we ensure that the bandwidth is also properly shared and used i personally clearly see the backhaul sharing is going to happen there is no way everybody can create their own backhaul for the kind of the data usage requirements it's just not going to happen so i think very clearly i see that there is an area which is going to happen the second important thing we have to see is we have to ensure that this network will get penetrated into the rural sector i think we have to make it to happen but even in urban centers yeah. there are a lot of blind spots uh with fairness i must say that you look at the urban center like india delhi bombay and compare with the rest of the urban center even in the world wherever i go i see the my network uh, you yeah, i mean they, they call quality i must say that in india is far superior to many western world i mean that the world acknowledges that acknowledges that but i think the second real revolution has to happen is in the two area the first revolution is in a backhaul area second revolution is that how do you take a cost effective mechanism to the rural side 
through a sharing concept. Sorry, you you had a great thought. No, so on the same concept, you know, we are talking about teledensity. After a point in time, I strongly believe the demanding the environment is getting. I think it's not about human density. Soon it's going to be about electronic density. You know, it's a world of six billion people. Uh, It's not about six billion users. It's going to be far much more. And, you know, today... Uh, we have an iPad, we have a Blackberry, we have a phone, we have a data card. We ourselves are roaming around with at least four to five yeah. different devices, yeah. which we're dependent on. You know, it's not that it's an extra device for us. We, Can we, we live need without... an antenna on our head now. <laughs> <laughs> so this spread is, you know, from an indoor location to right. the rural communication. Right. I think the spread is diverse, diverse. and uh, it has to go so, But do you see any challenges? Shanta is talking about getting a lot of players and stakeholders coming together. Yeah. Do you see challenges there? Uh, there are challenges, but uh, I think the challenge, key challenge, is about awareness. I think it's high time that we really start Among looking... the service providers? No, among the people. Uh, you know, I think... Uh, people means the consumers or, the, or consumers. the industry players? No, it's about the consumers too. I think the industry players have taken... I think there cannot be a better step or bigger step globally. Anywhere anyone would have done with three largest telecom operators coming together, forming a common company and opening the platform for everyone. You know, I think there cannot be something more synergistic uh, than this that this country has done. It has no precedence too, I'm sure. But I have, I have a question. Just two simple letters, but a million and one imperatives. Do is a challenge. The expectation of greatness. Which is why we don't just make technology. We make do machines. Super-powered creation engines that make things happen. Lenovo, for those who do. I don't need no care. I don't need no worries, I just won't share. Get unlimited internet for a day at 96 rupees and change your world. Just dongle with MTS Emblaze. Bijlipur mein tharo bhelkam hai. Main hoon sarpan chamaklal, yo maro bodyguard. Garmi to yaha badi hot hai. Par uka bhi chor se Bijlipur mein. Sarpan sa! Non-stop power money, productivity, but a profit to get up. We can put my party in the bus. Are you the demanding the environment is getting. I think it's not about human density. Soon it's going to be about electronic density. The whole dynamics of this network is changing, enabling operators to understand the user behavior. If the operator is able to reduce cost, then only he is able to reduce the cost for the end customer. Ages School of Business in association with Bloomberg UTV presents Ages Graham Bell Awards Telecom Innovation Series, powered by Microcall. At these times, Powered by Microcall, Knowledge Partner, PwC, a Bloomberg UTV Pulse initiative. The, the two issues in India we consider are inflation, high interest rates, and when will they stop? And when will government decision making start? Now, government decision making could have started in the presence of scams also, because let us say scam is involving three ministries and four ministers, and you know you change them or you fire them or whatever but why is the rest of the government completely stopped why have we stopped even having a EGOM or a GOM to decide oil prices perhaps Seto you could answer that you know, when service providers, new ones uh, are setting up, and we'll, we'll probably see a lot of new technology come in, 
do we have the flexibility that if a service provider started with a set of technology and he wants to innovate now, that he's so locked into the previous technology that for him to innovate and reach the next level is not possible or has a prohibitive cost and could be as high as the attempt to start a complete new network? That's how it was a reality in Esther years. Right. That a technology a vendor providing some solutions, the operator is locked in because of the costs in terms of you know upgrading it. But today, the way we look at technology is to have multi-standard, multi-technology from the same platform, which means it's a smooth upgrade. You don't no longer require any forklift upgrade. That's one advantage. Second is, while we are talking about all this, we are all aware about the huge demand for bandwidth. And as consumers, we are going to be consuming these kind of bandwidth and you're going to have a lot of machine-to-machine -machine communication, which goes beyond the six billion yeah. people. Then the whole dynamics of this network is changing. So what we are looking at is that the networks will have to become even more smarter. So when we talk about smart network, what does it really mean? Is that, you know, for instance, Mr. Shanta talked about backhaul and backbone sharing. Now, if the consumers are going to access some content somewhere, and if that access node closer to them can identify it intelligently, then there will be a certain amount of caching happening which means you are no longer using yeah. the backbone bandwidth and wasting resources. So something like a cloud? Uh, yeah, it is, it is a mix of all that. Okay. And technology uh, evolution is making it more intelligent, enabling operators to understand the user behavior and ensuring that various types of applications and content is provided to the user at the right experience. So ultimately, it is user experience that matters. Yeah. When we talk about multiple vendors, multiple equipments in the network, if they are following certain standards, then there are no issues. So who sets the standards, Shantan? There yeah. are I think uh, one is that uh, proactively some equipment vendors are setting the standard, one side. Other side is that consumer demand is setting the standard. I'll give an example. <clears throat> Today, the consumer demand can only explode when you get the cost down to a particular level, which has happened in India. To make it to happen, I'll give an example, is how can I ensure that my indoor site will become an outdoor site? We have already incurred the expenditure. The capital expenditure is incurred. None of us want to write off that capital expenditure. <laughs> but still, with the help of the various other equipment providers, we are converting the indoor site into the yeah. outdoor site so that the energy cost comes down. When the energy cost comes down, we will pass on that benefit to the to the consumer. consumer. How does it happen? It's fairly simple. If you look at the shelter, the power consuming items are your battery bank, your PIUs, various other items. Can you take that out of the shelter and make it into an outdoor item? And it is happening today. Absolutely. And that thought is good <laughs> enough for the equipment provider, for the process providers to make it to happen, technology providers. Why? Because the volumes Knew that. I just wanted to add, you know, there are two or three major areas which still yeah. can optimize. One is, uh, you know, reforming of uh, the spectrum. Right. Because there are a lot of uh, inbuilt inefficiencies when you are limited with four, you know, megahertz or six megahertz. And when you go from four to eight megahertz, the capacity doesn't become double, it becomes three times, you know, because of the sheer, you know, statistical uh, uh, issue. Hmm. and. You know, spectrum sharing, uh, let's say, could uh, help a lot in the remote areas where some person only becomes like a remote service provider and there are three, four companies marketing uh, the same infrastructure, you know, right. up to the BTS, right. you know, because this will bring in efficiencies and higher fill factor. And there's, uh, you know, it's very easily said that when marketing is done, the more sales takes place, you know, and we know incumbent versus when the multiple players have come in. And in some way, the M&A is some stage going to happen, which will help reforming and consolidation, you know. So I'm using the word reforming, cons consolidation, spectrum sharing. And the fourth point is, in our cities where we have a lot of copper, you know, so we have not unbundled the copper. If we unbundle the copper, a lot of high band, high capacity, you know, bandwidth services would shift uh, there which will give, you know, real futuristic uh, high-speed uh, services. Right. So let, let me come to the last theme. We, we are running uh, short of time now. We've talked about business and technology innovation, but let me coin a phrase and uh, talk about uh, 
socially responsible innovation where Absolutely. we are talking about issues like radiation which there is a lot of fears about perhaps not enough information as well as uh, we touched upon it uh, green uh, uh, systems which ensure that the carbon impact or the environment impact is limited. What are the kind of innovations uh, that we should be seeing in the next few years on this front? Absolutely. I think when we talk about these kind of uh, huge bandwidth then we are talking about a lot of storage of this information, particularly right. when we talk about the cloud environment. Sure. So the storage today is huge number of servers mm. across in a, uh, in a data center. Mm. There's innovation happened there in terms of looking at how applications can be independent of the storage, which means the fill factor of the storage becomes optimal, 80-90%. So therefore you are reducing, and when you look at these percentages, there's a saving of 40% in terms of the costs. Mm. So, there is huge savings happening on that. There is a lot of services that will come through service, uh, through cloud which will be delivered to the users. And therefore, there is going to be significant saving in terms of cost for the subscriber in taking those kind of applications, be it a software, be it a platform. And therefore, there is huge lot of innovation is happening in this place as we speak. And those benefits are going to reach the masses. And that's going to be the kind of next revolution that we will see here in our country also. Green Natas, how will that happen? So I am sure there is a lot of innovation already happening and solar is the first step. But I think uh, the world is focused a lot on solar, but there is wind. There is a lot of other ways that uh, technology can change. But has it been deployed in India yet? So uh, as a first step, you know, like we said, as a company, we use the first step of deploying power, uh, antennas on power transmission towers. Sure. We found a technology where you could tap the live line and, you know, take the transmission loss power because what the base station needs is very small power. It's a very small power spread over a large area. So you're tapping into the, the losing stream. Right? Absolutely. Mm. So that's something very innovative and I think should pick up. We need, of course, government support uh, to make that a reality on mass Is there a challenge on that front? It's the government's call. I mean, it's something different. So does it's it something... need a policy or a regulatory change? Absolutely. Uh, I'm sure that uh, the Electric Commission has to look at it very closely and differently. The last point on uh, radiation, which we haven't really discussed, is that a genuine concern uh, that consumers have? No, I think, uh, you know... Uh, From telecom tasks? Yeah, yeah. Uh, the, the obviously, the people get, uh, you know, uh, very worried when they hear a fear news, uh, like we were talking earlier. So, but it has to be addressed in a very, you know, factual manner, more like do's and don'ts, you know, yeah. kind of a knowledge. Uh, awareness in everything is like, you know, when we had uh, some of the diseases which spread, you know, uh, yeah. you know, uh, the people so get scared. Awareness is, is important. Awareness, you, uh, you guys are also working on this, right? Absolutely. Yeah. We, are, we are very much working in terms of looking at how do we uh, reduce any radiation through technology because you know we are also quite socially responsible in bringing these kind of latest technologies but at the same time understand that it is to the consumers so you can't harm the consumers on one side and say we are providing technology <laughs> but, but so is, is there a cost attached to this Mahesh because you're doing a lot of work on this no not really I think you know that's a myth we all carry that it's yeah. a lot of cost and uh, the minute you say about green mm. and less radiation it's expensive that's really not the case it's a matter of awareness that's all yeah. and it's about mass deployment. We are a country as a huge and anything we take up on a large scale, it's, it, it cannot be expensive. Yeah, mobile and, yeah, <laughs> and it is sustainable. The, the biggest point is that we are saving costs. Yeah. Carbon yeah. is one aspect, but the huge cost saving for them, which gets passed on to the subscribers. Yeah. So it's win-win. I think on the radiation part of it, uh, we all have to be very responsible on that. First thing is that uh, there is a radiation limit which is fixed and which has been accurately measured. And if, the, if it crosses that level, we need to declare all the towers yeah, where the radiation level is high. I think that process is in a place. Yeah. First, that is the most important part of it, which is in place. Second thing is that even yesterday, WHO has come out with a study which says that the radiation effect on the mobile phone user is declared as a 2B. 2B is possible, but not certain. And we need to educate the people. When you say possible but not certain, even coffee comes under the 2B category. <laughs> even talcum powder comes under the 2B category, which is the same as a mobile. But if you excessively use the mobile, then we need to tell them that how to use the mobile. And yeah, definitely don't use the important. mobile while uh, right. having pickle yeah. and putting talcum powder <laughs> on yourself, right? Absolutely. So, yes, so, so de-risk yourself on that. Absolutely. We need to de-risk. 
That, right. That if you use excessively, use the hands free, sure. something like that. That right. I think we all need to do responsibly along with the operators. Absolutely. Yeah. Gentlemen, thank you for being with us. Clearly, a critical situation with telecom infrastructure, a lot of innovations taking place in business, technology, and it's uh, great to see that uh, the industry is also fairly socially responsible and promises to make it safer and efficient for all of us. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you.